Good evening. My name is Shannon Lloyd, and I'm a professor of management at the John Molson School of Business. Before becoming a professor, I was a sustainability consultant. After more than a decade of working with diverse clients in many industries, I became very discouraged about the outcomes of my work. I'll give you an example. A colleague and I had been hired by a major food distribution company to assess the life cycle environmental impact of their product. We collected data, built models, and assessed the environmental impact of food production, food distribution, and food preparation. Our clients' operations, the distribution of food, had a significant climate impact. But the climate impact of food production and food preparation were quite a bit larger. The client highlighted our study and their annual sustainability report. But rather than focusing on how they could and would reduce their impact, they simply used our findings to emphasize that their operations accounted for a small percentage of the overall energy impact. And that was that. Several months of data collection and analysis to say, relative to everyone else, we're doing pretty good. This practice of relative comparisons is common and problematic. Comparing the environmental impact of companies or products can perhaps be helpful in understanding which environmental options are least harmful. But they don't tell us if a company or product is sustainable. This framework of who does more or less harm is not the path to a healthy and stable planet. What we need, and what we're starting to see, are methods for determining the amount of environmental impact allowable given Earth's environmental limits. Among these methods are science-based targets, a new approach in which companies voluntarily set emission targets aligned with the temperature goal of the Paris Agreement, which is to halt global temperature rise at 1.5 degrees Celsius. My research team has been investigating companies' use of science-based targets. My conclusion? Science-based targets are a good starting point, but in their current form, they are not enough. First, there's not enough transparency. Science-based targets are calculated using mathematical formulas that represent different ways of allocating allowable emissions to individual companies. These formulas reflect different underlying assumptions and different socio-political choices. It's not clear how the methods were selected, who had a say in selecting the methods, or what assumptions companies make when they use the methods to set targets. This makes it difficult to understand whose interests are represented, and more importantly, whose interests are not represented in these methods. And it makes it difficult to determine whether science-based targets set by individual companies will collectively align with the temperature goal of the Paris Agreement. Second, science-based targets rely too much on green wishing. This term, green wishing, describes the hope that certain actions will make the world more sustainable when in reality they fall short. Let's take the example of renewable energy certificates. Say a company uses electricity produced from fossil fuels. They can then purchase the right to claim low or zero emissions from renewable energy used by someone else. Yes, companies can actually claim emission reductions against their science-based targets by buying renewable energy credits, renewable energy certificates. This is allowed because we have collectively, collectively assumed that the sale of these certificates will trigger more investment in renewable energy and eventually reduce the emissions somewhere else. I really wish this were the case. But unfortunately, there's no evidence to support this assumption. Science-based targets will not make companies Paris aligned if they continue to claim emission reductions that are not real. Third, not enough companies are setting science-based targets. Large companies get a lot of attention when they set science-based targets. But are all companies following suit? As of last week, nearly 1,400 companies had set science-based targets. This is a small number compared to the tens or hundreds of millions of companies across the globe. But companies that set science-based targets tend to be large. In fact, we estimate that these 1,400 companies are collectively responsible for 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions. That's big but it's not big enough. Science-based targets are set voluntarily, so companies likely set a target if there's a business case to do so. 
I'm excited to say that 30, 22 Canadian companies have set science-based targets, and 30 Canadian companies have committed to setting a target. But who's missing from this list? I'll give you a few Canadian examples. There's a list called the Carbon Majors that identifies the 100 companies responsible for more than 70% of global industrial greenhouse gas emissions. Four Canadian companies are on this list. This includes three oil and gas companies, Suncor Energy, Canadian Natural Resources, and Husky Energy, and one mining company, Tech Resources Limited. To my knowledge, none of these companies have set science-based targets. We see the same pattern globally. More companies, in particular the largest polluters, must set targets to collectively meet the goal of the Paris Agreement. So what's next? Companies have been voluntarily measuring and reporting greenhouse gas emissions and talking about their climate action for decades. Yet, the climate crisis persists. In fact, the latest reports from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change paint a dire picture. Without comprehensive policy and massive action immediately, we could be heading toward a global average increase of three degrees Celsius by the end of this century. Each fraction of a degree means more damage and loss to nature and humans. Science-based targets are a promising development. They can play a role in accelerating our transition to a low carbon future if there's more transparency, less green wishing, and aggressive target setting by the most polluting companies. But make no mistake, science-based targets are currently voluntary. And voluntary initiatives are not enough. What we need are policymakers in Canada and across the globe who will take action now to hold companies to account. Thank you.